Pan Am Flight 799 Pan Am Flight 799 was an international cargo flight from Los Angeles International Airport to Cam Ranh Airport in South Vietnam that crashed on December 26, 1968, near Anchorage, Alaska. The aircraft involved was a Boeing 707-321C aircraft operated by Pan American World Airways. All three crew members died in the crash, in the crash, in the crash. Died in the crash, is died in the crash, is died in the crash, is died in the crash, 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 in the crash. Aircraft and crew The Boeing 707-321 C with construction number C slash N18,824 and manufacturer serial number MSN397 was rolled out of Boeing's Renton, Washington factory on December 17, 1964, and two weeks later was sold to Pan American World. The four turboffin engines installed under the wing were Pratt and Whitney JT3 Demonis, 3B models, with a thrust of 18,000 pounds each. The captain was 47-year-old Arthur Moan, who had 15,207 hours of total pilot time, including 3,969 hours in a Boeing 707, and had been with the airline since 1949. The first officer was 38-year-old Johannes D. Markestein, who had 9,000, 813 hours of total pilot time, including 2813 hours in a Boeing 707, and had been with the airline since 1957. The flight engineer was 31-year-old James R. Skellinger, who had 3,032 hours of total pilot time, including 138 hours of flight engineer time in Boeing 707s. These three crew members had not flown together before, although the captain and co-pilot had previously flown together from Anchorage twice. 22. Accident The aircraft carried out a regular postal shipment from San Francisco, California to Camran Bay, South Vietnam with intermediate stops in Anchorage, Alaska, Tokyo, Japan, and Da Nang, South Vietnam. An interim landing in Anchorage, Alaska was done for refueling and crew change. At 10.54 p.m., Flight 799 took off from San Francisco to Anchorage, and the flight initially took place without any problems. However, since Anchorage Airport was closed due to weather conditions, Captain Moan had to land at nearby Elmendorf Air Force Base, as planned ahead of time. The crew noted that there were problems with the Nome 4 engine's thrust reverser. A 2 Flight 799 was delayed in leaving Elmendorf for two hours. Eventually, at 5.55 a.m., Captain Moan started the engines and at 6.02 a.m., the craft was allowed to taxi to the runway. Air traffic control gave permission to proceed to runway 5, but the crew requested runway 23, as the latter had greater effective length. When the crew were offered a follow-me truck due to lack of knowledge of the facility, they were preoccupied with the taxi checklist. Captain Moan had not re-lowered the flaps after raising them to prevent icing, during which time First Officer Marcus Stein remarked, OK, let's not forget them. As Flight 799 reached the runways and thanks to the follow-me truck guiding them there, Two Air Force flights took off before them, and then Flight 799 was cleared for takeoff at 6.15 a.m. Takeoff would be performed by First Officer Marcus Stein, and he proceeded to power up all four engines. Immediately after the plane left the ground, the cockpit stick shaker began to vibrate, a safety feature to alert pilots of imminent aerodynamic stall. The aircraft then banked to the right, the right wing touched the ground, and the plane crashed 59.2 seconds after takeoff just beyond runway 23, exploding from ground impact and being consumed by explosion and fire. All three crew members were killed upon impact. Investigation 
the National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB, came to the conclusion that probable causes of the crash were a defective checklist, list, B, the 707's defective takeoff warning hardware, C, ineffective implementation of Boeing's service bulletins, and D, stress caused by a rushed flight schedule. The immediate mechanical cause was takeoff with flaps retracted, leading to loss of attitudinal control and altitude. NTSB discovered that a lower flaps item appeared only on the taxi checklist and was not included in the pre-takeoff checklist, which comes after the taxi checklist so that it could remind the pilots that flaps must be lowered to ensure safe takeoff. The cockpit voice recorder CVR showed that First Officer Marcus Stein lowered flaps during initial reading of the taxi checklist, but Captain Moon then retracted flaps, initially without Marcus Stein's knowledge, in accordance with Panem's cold weather operating procedures to prevent icing. Marcus Stein was made aware of Moan's flaps retraction only during the taxi checklist's second reading, but neither officer remembered to revisit flaps that item being absent from the pre-takeoff checklist. Any time a 707's flaps aren't extended lowered for takeoff, upon the crew applying thrust, the takeoff warning system should sound an audible warning signal horn, but this didn't happen on Flight 799 because Pan American had failed to implement Boeing's January 31, 1967 Service Bulletin 2384 recommend the NTSB recommended that checklists be revised so that items critical for safe flight be accomplished prior to takeoff and that Boeing Service Bulletin No. 2384 be immediately made mandatory via an FAA airworthiness directive. FAA belatedly issued the requested airworthiness directive five months later, on May 28, 1969. Consequences Flight 799 was one of a series of aircraft losses resulting approximately from failures in checklist design and implementation. Unfortunately, it took 18 years for NTSB's recommendation in the 1969 crash report that air carrier cockpit checklists to be reviewed in an effort to ensure that each list provides a means of reminding the crew immediately prior to takeoff that all items critical for safe flight have been accomplished to be implemented. After the August 16, 1987 loss of Northwest Airlines, Flight 255 for similar reasons, NTSB recommended that Federal Aviation Administration FAA convene a human performance research group to determine if there is any type or method of presenting a checklist that produces better performance on part of user personnel. In due course, these recommendations led to a sea change in checklist design and implementation, incorporating human factors research and crew resource management into cockpit management.